Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And, and thanks to all of our witnesses. I've um, I've followed this as closely as I can from two two uh, committees, but both both really important. And I, I thank you. It's it's good stuff. I, I think, Mr. Chairman, just as a note of some encouragement up front, I, I wanted to, to um, talk about a bill that uh, Senator Lujan and I just introduced. Uh, the call it's called the revive economic growth and Rec reclaim orphaned wells act of 2021 and the reason this is good for rural economies and good and why it's got both republican and the democrat introducing it is because it helps clean up and provide jobs cleaning up old orphaned oil and gas wells that that were you know drilled and and uh, you know made long before there were reclamation laws and regulations and they, there's about 56,000 of them around the country and uh, you know Ben Ray and I just feel like this is a good opportunity for for two parties to come together and do something constructive that enhances the economies of local communities and states where um, there's been obviously some drop off in workers in the oil patch because of, of uh, demand. Um, not even talking for a minute about the, the uh, current administration's policy, but because of a, a drop in demand. Good, good opportunity to put people to work in the in a field that they're uh, that they're uh, obviously they know something about good paying jobs um, as well as cleaning up the environment. With that, I want to stay on the the topic uh, of. Uh, of energy policy in, in rural America, because of course we know a thing or two about that in North Dakota and, and, and get real specific here uh, in real current. J yesterday, and I won't go through all the history, but yesterday was an important day in Washington DC in the district court because Judge Bozberg had set yesterday as the deadline for supplementing the record as it relates to the decision ultimately um, to whether or not to shut down the Dakota Access Pipeline, which moves about 570,000 barrels of North Dakota oil per day to market, um, has been doing that now safely for about four years. Um, and uh, and it's, it's being litigated and I won't go through all those details, but yesterday was an important day and, and I wanted to offer just a couple of words from a, a filing yesterday in the, in the district court here in DC by um, Mark, Fox, the chairman of the Mandan Hadassah Rikara Nation, also known as three affiliated tribes. Um, the th the uh, Fort Berthold Reservation is sort of in the heart of the Bakken. Uh, and I'll just give you a couple of things from his statement. And then I'm going to ask unanimous consent to, to insert into the record, Mr. Chairman. But he says the MHA Nation's cost of health insurance alone exceeds $40 million per year. Just think about that. The, the, they spend $40 million a year for healthcare for for the members of the of the Mandan Hudatsa Rikara Nation. Now, what about the shutting down of the Dakota Access Pipeline, which um, is being litigated, um, and and it's become important because, of course, we're talking about federal lands. We're talking about um, rural economies. Um, but he says here, there's this short paragraph. He said, I directed MHA Nation staff and consultant experts to provide a study of the financial harm that could be done to the MHA Nation in the event DAPL is shut down. They have estimated that the losses will exceed $160 million over the first year, exceed $250 million over two years. And of course, that goes on forever if, if that pipeline gets shut down. And I won't go through all the, the other issues, but I would just ask unanimous consent to, to put this into the record. And then, uh, sorry. Yeah. Well, without, I'm sorry, my mic was off without objection. So we're right. sorry. Th Mr. Th Chairman. No, sorry. no problem. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what's, what's this all got to do with banking? Well, obviously we're also facing a serious discrimination in certain aspects of our economy. If certain industries within our economy, by particularly large banks, obviously the oil and gas industry, as well as the, the coal industry and the utilities uh, that generate the electricity that generates more electricity and, and that captures uh, the carbon and, and pipes it to, to locations and, and all of the opportunity for uh, not only job creation, wealth creation, but, and I might ask, I might ask uh, Ms. Sagama about this, I don't really see global demand shrinking a great deal real fast. I mean, perhaps over time uh, that will happen. Um, somebody's going to meet that demand. I, I, I do believe that climate change is global. We hear that a lot, right? It's, it's global. Um, 
you know, what I worry about is, first of all, Mandan Hadassah Rikaran Nation, they're going to produce that oil. And if it doesn't move by a pipeline, and if there are banks, if the banks or financial institutions stop financing things like pipelines uh, uh, because of pressure from, uh, from advocates, it's going to be trucked. Um, it's going to be railed. It's going to go to the coast and get on barges, um, all of which emit many, many more greenhouse gas, gases than does a pipeline. Or worse than that, it's going to be produced in Russia or Venezuela or Nigeria. And I might just ask Ms. Sagama, do, do any of these other countries, or, or for that matter, any major oil producing country, um, do, they, do they have cleaner environmental protections or better environmental protections than the United States? Not those countries you mentioned, Senator, but certainly uh, Canada and Norway, I'd say, are the only ones who are comparable to the United States. So that brings us to the Keystone XL pipeline. Isn't that ironic? Um, you know, I cited the first Keystone pipeline through North Dakota, 600 landowners land. Not one inch of it had to be um, had to be condemned. Um, it is ironic, isn't it, that that get, that oil from Canada displaces oil from Venezuela? Uh, we don't we haven't even talked about the national security implications. But my my point being, if we're going to have a serious discussion about rural economies, we have to talk about certainly agriculture, and we have to talk about energy production. And I would just plead with my friends, and, and this is why I, I started by talking about the, the bill that uh, Senator Lujan and I have, have introduced together. Um, let's look for real solutions to the, to the climate crisis, regardless of what people might believe about it, whose fault it is, how fast it's coming, all of those things. If the goal is to reduce emissions, let's work with our banker, banking friends or financial friends. Somebody's going to invest in these things, and, and most likely the investment will be more expensive and um, less insured than, than our, our banking communities. Could I just ask you, Ms. Sagma, are you familiar with any of the challenges and have you seen any specific examples of the financial industry, um, you know, discriminating Ms. against? Ms. Sagma, be, we're, we're way over time, so be brief if you can on that answer, thank you. Certainly, we have seen activists try to deny the industry of, uh, banking and financial resources, and that would definitely mean less investment in rural areas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thanks, Senator Kramer. I appreciate it.